nope, I'm not standing on the beach. And this isn't the giant Resolve logo, but it is the Magic Mask feature in DaVinci Resolve. Let's get in the studio. Yep, Magic Mask. It is one of my favorite DaVinci Resolve features. It is studio only, but if this video doesn't convince you to buy DaVinci Resolve Studio, I don't know what will. What are you waiting on? By the way, if you have DaVinci Resolve Studio, drop me a comment below. Tell me that one gotta have it feature that was in studio that pushed you over the edge so that you would buy it. Anyway, Magic Mask is really awesome. It does have a few drawbacks and we're gonna talk about those in this video, but I use it in almost every one of my videos and it's phenomenal. I don't know how I did this the old way of drawing a line around somebody. Yeah, I just drew a line around myself and held steady, didn't I? Anyway, <laughs> let's hop into Resolve and take a look at what we're working with. This is the intro. We're gonna come back to that later. I'll show you a few caveats with Magic Mask. I've got an example using the Edit tab and one using the Fusion tab. Let's get started with the Edit tab. We're gonna start with our clip and we're gonna Alt Mouse Wheel Zoom In and we're going to hold Alt, click on our clip and then click and drag up, making a duplicate. And then we're gonna bring it up one track. So we're gonna bring space in here to put something else. Then under titles, we're gonna grab text. Let's just put some text there, right? And we're gonna click on it and change it to say subscribe because that's not self-serving. Change the font, change the size, and you can't see anything yet. Don't worry about that. We're gonna find a good representative spot in our clip. And this clip is pretty easy. So some of this is clip dependent, but we're gonna click on our clip, go over to the color tab here, and then once we're in here, we've got a blank node. You can either press Alt S to create a new node or Control Z to get rid of it, or just work in the node that we have. Depends on if you're doing color grading, but we're gonna come down here to the magic mask icon. You've got power windows and all that stuff, but we want the magic mask. And it says object, if you click here, it's person, but really you can ignore that. DaVinci Resolve is smart enough to figure out what you're doing. And we're also going to go straight for better and I like to bump the iterations up to about 10. I don't know why, but it seems to just work better. So we have a GoPro and we have my face and then we have my body. And sometimes you can just get away with one stroke. Sometimes it takes several, but we're gonna just see if this works. And then we're gonna press our track forward and back button because we're in the middle of our clip here. If you're at the end, you can just use the track back. If you're at the beginning, you can use track forward, but we're gonna just track forward and back. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, Resolve is gonna take more or less time to do this. Also, the more strokes you have, the more complex the scene is, yada, 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 variables. That all plays into this and now it's already done. So coming back, we're gonna check our mask by using the toggle mask overlay button. And you're gonna see that it selected the saddlebags on the motorcycle I'm riding and me and the GoPro. One of the other things we can do is we can go back to our reference frame. I clicked on it the first time, yay me. And we can use our minus icon. If you notice here, we've got plus and minus. So add is blue and subtract is red. If you have an issue with something in your frame that's getting tracked and you don't want it to, you can draw around your subject or whatever it is that you're trying to mask and just go ahead and do that. And then you have to hit track forward and back again. And that's gonna rerun the whole thing. And then we'll get the magic to happen. Yes, the word magic comes up quite a bit. And that's done. We're gonna right click and open space here next to our node and select add alpha output. That creates a blue circle. So we're going to connect the blue square output of our node to the blue circle and voila. Now it's not masked because we still have our mask overlay button on. Ta-da, now you can see the word subscribe is now behind me. Look at that, it did a pretty good job. And if I zoom in, just using my mouse wheel, you can sort of pixel peep it and see that there's some fading going on here. If you switch to faster and then go back to your reference frame, and track it again, you'll see as it goes along that instead of a fade, you've got a sharper edge, but it's really not all that pleasing to the eye. Now that I've fixed it, you can see that we're back to our little fade and you can see that the stuff in the background, it's close. 
If you pixel peep it, it's not perfect. You can play with the radius and all these other settings. So we can, we can do a black clip. We can do a white clip. Now that it's done all the tracking, it doesn't have to redo any of it. We'll go back to our edit page and you can see there's no render cache that needs to have happen like on Fusion Clips. And it will play back in this window and zoomed out here, it looks pretty good. You know, we could uh, click here and move the subscribe around a little bit and then it's even less noticeable. So this works really well for logos and sort of background things. It can sort of give you that effect like you see on a lot of TikToks or Reels or whatever, where it flickers a little bit. We're gonna handle some of that by going into the Fusion page. So let's do that. So for our next clip, we are gonna use Fusion, but first we're gonna make a duplicate and then we're gonna right click and say new Fusion clip. Listen, I know that a lot of people don't do this, but if you do the new Fusion clip, it resets your frame marker. So it starts at zero and ends at, you know, 180 or however many frames you have. Anyway, point is you start from zero and you go to the number of frames in your clip versus if you just right click and say open in Fusion page on a regular clip, it will be frame 330 to frame 640 or what have you. So it just makes things a little bit cleaner and easier. Anyway, now we're gonna right click on it and say open in Fusion page. So now we've got our blank Fusion clip here in the Fusion page. We're gonna press shift space bar and type in magic. There's magic mask, click add. And I am gonna show you a composition with multiple things later on. This is just an example. Now this one, because magic mask likes high contrast, this one's gonna be very easy. And I think with the blurry background, DaVinci Resolve really figures it out pretty well. So we're just gonna draw a line on me and it didn't get it really well, <laughs> of course. But hey, just click on the red dot here. It turns off the effect and we'll draw on me like we did in the last clip. And now when I turn it back on, it's much, much better. Then we're gonna come down here and click better again. And we're gonna track forward and back. It works very much the same as in the edit page, but a little bit, uh, a little bit broken up. You've got the mat and settings and things like that. So it's a little bit different, but same basic premise. And while that renders, boop the like button. If you're having a good time, if you're learning something, if you like what I'm doing here, show me the love, you know, it takes a lot of work to make these. Anyway, I should not fill up any more space. Depending on the speed of your computer, the Fusion version of Magic Mask will take forever, respectively. In my case, it's gonna take a couple of minutes and then we'll continue. All right, it's done. We can scrub through and see that Resolve somehow managed to figure out that my finger is part of me, even though it was completely off screen at the beginning of the clip. And you can see a little bit of the reflection off the bike in the background, but I don't think anybody's gonna notice that. This one's gonna get us really close really easily. So we'll go back to the edit tab and we'll come over to effects and we will choose filters and then we'll pick something fun like film damage and we'll drag that onto the bottom clip and then you can really see that we've made a difference here and of course this is a fusion clip so we're going to let it render now that the render is done we can play through and you can see that film damage applies to everything but me how cool is that that is neat right and i, I kind of went back and forth with this i don't know there's a lot to discuss in the intro janky effect, but I think what we're gonna do is go to the third effect now where I've never seen anybody else do this, but you can do a pseudo uh, transparency with magic masks. So let's hop back into Fusion and take a look at this last clip. It's a doozy. Here's our last clip. And if I click here, you can see my Road Reality logo from my main channel is behind my fingers but it's transparent behind this windshield. How cool is that? Let's right click on it, open it in Fusion page, and I'll show you what we're working with. Hey, look at that. So our media in one goes to Emerge where it merges with the logo. I brought that up with the one key in the left viewer. So that's just the logo, but media in one starts here and I'm holding this windshield and we've got two magic masks. If I click one here, you can see that this is me and it did a mostly good job and Magic Mask 2, when I bring that in the left viewer, it's mostly just the windshield. I don't know how DaVinci figured it out, but it figured out what the boundaries were of the windshield and it rolled with it. So the trick here is that in the merge, where you merge your translucent object 
with everything else that's gone on before it is you come over to settings and you change the blend. So if I change this blend all the way to one, obviously that makes that windshield opaque. But if I bring it back down, now it's not opaque anymore. Yes, if you pixel peep it, I said it again, golly, I need new words. But you can see sort of the stuff behind the logo, behind the thing, but hey, the man on a galloping horse will never know the difference. So you can actually do transparency. That's a neat effect, right? That's really cool. Now let's go look at some of the caveats before we wrap this up. So all the way back at the start of our timeline, we've got our beach clip. And if I disable these, you can see it's just the beach. And then I added the Resolve logo and I positioned it to be where something else was. So if we right click on this and go into the Fusion page, you can see that it's just me standing between a fire pit and a firewood rack. So obviously the firewood rack is where the DaVinci Resolve logo went, but look at this. If I zoom in, you can see there's a ton of stuff that sort of matches the same color as my hair. So DaVinci Resolve did a pretty good job. I spent a lot of time trying to do this in the color tab, but it didn't work. So we brought it into Fusion and you can see that it mostly worked. If you zoom in, you can see some of the croppings here a little bit and this shadow. Now, every one of these lines here is where I added another stroke. So for this one, you'll see if I, I have Magic Mask 1 selected and I zoom out, we should be able to see where I added a stroke to it. Yep, I'm getting rid of the waste bin behind me there with the red minus stroke. And I'm gonna do a lot of minuses in this one and not a lot of pluses. So wherever Resolve picked up something that wasn't part of me, I added another stroke using your add and subtract for the uh, stroke mode and then had to go back and forth. And that's the magic mask effect, folks. Yes, it is not perfect, but it is very, very good. And like I said, I use it in almost all my videos. And now hopefully you can use it in your videos. Leave me a comment below. Are you gonna use this in your own videos? If you have the studio version, if not, are you gonna buy studio because of this feature, because this thing saves me a ton of time. I used to do all the rotoscoping manually and now I don't have to, and it gets me 99% of the way there. So now that you know the ins and outs of it, I think it's a great thing. And I'm gonna thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments about it or trouble using it, tinker with it and then send me an email or whatever, drop me a comment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope you're having a great day. Go check out this video next, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day. I said that already. I'm out. <laughs>